Let me introduce our guest in Studio B. He is David Bartik, a certified specialist in criminal law and an attorney who has handled several high-profile capital cases in California. Oh, I beg your pardon. He's out in San Diego, of course, being a California lawyer and all. Welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Lisa and Kelly. David, let me ask you this. When I was out in San Diego for the last week and a half, I heard some rumors that San Diego is a hung jury kind of town, that there have been a number of high-profile cases out there, such as the Betty Broderick case, that had to be tried more than once. This jury is now in its fifth day of deliberations. What do you think about that theory that it's San Diego, it's a hung jury town, that could be what's going on in the Westerfield case? Well, at least I'd like to give the credit to the perhaps the defense attorneys for doing such a good job for having those hung jurors. But I really think that San Diego, for the most part, is a rather conservative town in nature. Um, it was really built around the United States Navy. So for the most part, and I've tried cases across the country, I think that you'll find the San Diego uh, general community and the general jurors that you type and get are generally individuals who um, are more conservative politically. Many are retired from the military. Um, and so in regard to the fact that San Diego has a reputation for having a lot of hung jurors, I think there's been one or two high profile cases, but I might also say that I think that the district attorney's office here in San Diego has the highest conviction rate of any city in the state of California. Really? Well, see, that's interesting. I want to point out to everyone, because I think a lot of people are under the misunderstanding that a hung jury is the same thing as an acquittal. Obviously, they are two very different things, and an acquittal, the defendant walks free, never to be tried again. When there's a hung jury, of course, that means that the case is undecided, and the prosecutors could elect to try it all over again, and there could still be a conviction. You think there could be a hung jury in this case, David? Well, it's very possible, Lisa, even though I still think that the the case is rather it's premature to make those type of guesses at this point in speculation. You have to remember, these, uh, this jury heard an extensive amount of information and testimony. I mean, over 25 days of testimony, close to 200 exhibits. Um, basically, in regard to the deliberation, it's generally in like three phases. The first phase is when they review all the evidence. I think that that's what they have been doing. The second phase is when they get together amongst themselves and talk about it, talk about their perceptions of the evidence. I think that's what we're in right now. And basically, by them requesting certain um, evidence to be replayed for them, to take a look at the photographs, that type of thing, what they're trying to do is just to determine, to make sure that they have a clear understanding what that evidence is, and to clear up any differences that the different jurors may have amongst them. And then, of course, the final stage, after they've been able to come to agreement to what the evidence is, is basically to vote on whether they feel Mr. Westerfield is guilty or not guilty of these charges. David, let me jump in and ask you a question, if I could. Um, what Certainly, Kelly. Thanks. What do you think, um, you mentioned that the San Diego jury, uh, juries are typically quite conservative. What do you think that the jury is doing um, in terms of analyzing the pornographic evidence and also the evidence relating to uh, what happened at Dad's Cafe? Correct. First of all, Kelly, in regard to the, the specific notes that they have, I agree with you what you said before the break, that I think it's short of, at this point, it indicates that they're taking the prosecution's point of view, at least some jurors are, and they've requested this type of testimony. They requested that they have the, uh, the tape played back to them of the uh, statement made by David Westerfield. Not only did they want the tape played back, but they actually asked for the transcript as well, which indicates to me that they are very, being very um, specific in regard to what those statements were and really looking at it with a fine-tooth comb. Right. I think it's also important to note that the fact that Mr. Westerfield did not testify that I think this t uh, tape takes on an even more important role because it's really the only opportunity they have to hear something directly from Mr. Westerfield. If I may go on in regard to the pornographic material, I think it's also important to note that not only did they ask for all the pornographic photographs, but then they sent a separate note requesting the specific photographs that are of David Westerfield's former girlfriend's daughter. And so I think it's very interesting that we can know at this point that they're kind of keen on that type of testimony. And that certainly would um, be the type of testimony the prosecutor would like them to consider, which gives them the motive that he's looking for. Well, David Bartik, good analysis. For me, it all boils down to this. All the evidence that they've asked for so far is evidence introduced by the prosecution. David, I want you to stay right there. We're going to have some more questions. For